According to the Hebrew Bible, the Kingdom of Israel, was one of two successor states to the former United Kingdom of Israel and Judah. Historians often refer to the Kingdom of Israel as the Northern Kingdom, or, as the Kingdom of Samaria to differentiate it from the Southern Kingdom of Judah. Some scholars have challenged the biblical account that the Northern Kingdom of Israel broke off from a united monarchy with the Southern Kingdom of Judah, suggesting instead that the Northern Kingdom of Israel developed independently of Judah, and that it first reached the political, economic, military and architectural sophistication of a kingdom under the Omride dynasty around 884 BCE. However, this opinion is rejected by other scholars, who believe that the biblical account on the formation of the two kingdoms is to be considered as accurate, although with embellishments and exaggerations. The kingdom of Israel existed roughly from 930 BCE until 720 BCE, when it was conquered by the Neo-Assyrian Empire. The major cities of the kingdom were Shechem, Terza, Samaria, Jaffa, Bethel, and Dan. Chapter 1, Biblical Narrative In the Hebrew Bible, the Kingdom of Israel has been referred to as the House of Joseph. It is also frequently referenced as Ephraim, the tribe whose territory housed the capital cities and the royal families. It has also been referred to as Israel in Samaria. According to the Hebrew Bible, the territory of the Kingdom of Israel comprised the territories of the tribes of Zebulun, Issachar, Asher, Naphtali, Dan, Manasseh, Ephraim, Reuben, Simeon, and Gad, and cities under the supervision of the Levites. Its capital was Samaria according to the Book of Isaiah. Chapter 2, Biblical Background Chapter 2 Section 1, United Monarchy the United Kingdom of Israel and Judah is said to have existed from about 1030 to about 930 BCE. It was a union of all the twelve Israelite tribes living in the area that presently approximates modern Israel and the other Levantine territories, including much of western Jordan, and western Syria. Chapter 2 Section 2 Division After the death of Solomon in about 931 BCE, most of the Israelite tribes except for Judah, and Benjamin refused to accept Rehoboam, the son and successor of Solomon, as their king. The rebellion against Rehoboam arose after he refused to lighten the burden of taxation and services that his father had imposed on his subjects. Jeroboam, who was not of the Davidic line, was sent forth from Egypt by the malcontents. The tribe of Ephraim and all Israel raised the old cry, Every man to his tents, O Israel. Rehoboam fled to Jerusalem, and in 930 BC, Jeroboam was proclaimed king over all Israel at Shechem. After the revolt at Shechem at first only the tribe of Judah remained loyal to the house of David. But very soon after the tribe of Benjamin joined Judah. The northern kingdom continued to be called the kingdom of Israel or Israel, while the southern kingdom was called the kingdom of Judah. 2 Chronicles also says that members of the tribes of Ephraim, Manasseh and Simeon fled to Judah during the reign of Asa of Judah. Chapter 3, History Chapter 3 Section 1, Early Kings and Omride Dynasty Shechem, was the first capital of the Kingdom of Israel. Afterwards it was Tertza. King Omri built his capital in Samaria, which continued as such until the destruction of the kingdom by the Assyrians. Today, among archaeologists, Samaria is one of the most universally accepted archaeological sites from the biblical period at around 850 BCE. The Mesha Steel, written in Old Hebrew alphabet, records a victory of King Mesha of Moab against King Omri of Israel and his son Ahab. Chapter 3, Section 2 Relations between the Kingdoms of Israel and Judah. According to the Bible, for the first sixty years, the kings of Judah tried to re-establish their authority over the northern kingdom, and there was perpetual war between them. For the following eighty years, there was no open war between them, and, for the most part, they were in friendly alliance, cooperating against their common enemies, especially against Damascus. The conflict between Israel and Judah was resolved when Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, allied himself with the house of Ahab through marriage. Later, Jehoshaphat's son and successor, Jehoram of Judah, married Ahab's daughter Athaliah, cementing the alliance. 
However, the sons of Ahab were slaughtered by Jehu following his coup d'état around 840 BCE. Chapter 3 Section 3 Destruction of the Kingdom In circa 732 BCE, Pekah of Israel, while allied with Rezan, king of Aram, threatened Jerusalem. Ahaz, king of Judah, appealed to Tiglath Pileser III, the king of Assyria, for help. After Ahaz paid tribute to Tiglath Pileser, Tiglath Pileser sacked Damascus and Israel, annexing Aram and territory of the tribes of Reuben, Gad and Manasseh in Gilead, including the desert outposts of Jator, Nephish, and Nodab. People from these tribes, including the Reubenite leader, were taken captive and resettled in the region of the Kaba River system. Tiglath Pileser also captured the territory of Naphtali and the city of Genoa in Ephraim, and an Assyrian governor was placed over the region of Naphtali. According to 2 Kings 16:9 and 2 Kings 15:29. The population of Aram and the annexed part of Israel was deported to Assyria. The remainder of the northern kingdom of Israel continued to exist within the reduced territory as an independent kingdom until around 720 BCE, when it was again invaded by Assyria, and the rest of the population deported. During the three year siege of Samaria in the territory of Ephraim by the Assyrians, Shalmaneser v died and was succeeded by Sargon II who himself records the capture of that city thus, Samaria I looked at, I captured, 27,280 men who dwelt in it I carried away into Assyria. Thus, around 720 BCE, after two centuries, the kingdom of the ten tribes came to an end. Some of the Israelite captives were resettled in the Kaba region, and the rest in the land of the Medes, thus establishing Hebrew communities in Ekbatana and Rages. The Book of Tobit additionally records that Sargon had taken other captives from the northern kingdom to the Assyrian capital of Nineveh, in particular Tobit from the town of Thisbe in Naphtali. The Hebrew Bible relates that the population of the Kingdom of Israel was exiled, becoming known as the Ten Lost Tribes. To the south, the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Simeon, the tribe of Benjamin and the people of the tribe of Levi, who lived among them of the original Israelite nation remained in the southern kingdom of Judah. The kingdom of Judah continued to exist as an independent state until 586 BCE, when it was conquered by the Neo-Babylonian Empire. Chapter 3 Section 3 Subsection 2 Samaritan Version The Samaritan version to the events claims that actually much of the population of the northern kingdom of Israel remained in place upon the exile, including the tribes of Naphtali, Manasseh, Benjamin and Levi, being the progenitors of the Samaritans. In their book The Bible Unearthed, authors Israel Finkelstein and Neil Asher Silberman estimate that only a fifth of the population were actually resettled out of the area during, the two deportation periods under Tiglath Pileser III and Sargon II. Many of the northern tribes also fled south to Jerusalem, which appears to have expanded in size fivefold during this period, requiring a new wall to be built and a new source of water Siloam to be provided by King Hezekiah. Chapter 3 Section 3 Subsection 3 Medieval Rabbinic Fable In Medieval Rabbinic Fable, the concept of the ten tribes who were taken away from the house of David, becomes confounded with accounts of the Assyrian deportations leading to the myth of the ten lost tribes. Chapter 3 Section 3 Subsection 4 Recorded History no known non-biblical record exists of the Assyrians having exiled people from Dan, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun or western Manasseh. Descriptions of the deportation of people from Reuben, Gad, Manasseh in Gilead, Ephraim and Naphtali indicate that only a portion of these tribes were deported and the places to which they were deported are known locations given in the accounts. The deported communities are mentioned as still existing at the time of the composition of the Books of Kings and Chronicles and did not disappear by assimilation. 2 Chronicles 31-18 explicitly mentions northern Israelites who had been spared by the Assyrians in particular people of Ephraim, Manasseh, Asher, Issachar, and Zebulun, and how members of the latter three returned to worship at the Temple in Jerusalem during the reign of Hezekiah. Chapter 4 royal houses. The northern kingdom had nineteen kings across nine different dynasties throughout its two hundred and eight years of existence. 
Chapter 5, Religion The religious climate of the Kingdom of Israel appears to have followed two major trends. The first, that of worship of Yahweh, and the second that of worship of Baal as detailed in the Hebrew Bible, and in the Baal cycle discovered at Ugarit. According to the Hebrew Bible Jeroboam built two places of worship, one at Bethel and one at far northern Dan, as alternatives to the temple in Jerusalem. He did not want the people of his kingdom to have religious ties to Jerusalem, the capital city of the rival kingdom of Judah. He erected golden balls at the entrance to the temples to represent the national god. The Hebrew Bible, written from the perspective of scribes in Jerusalem, referred to these acts as the way of Jeroboam or the errors of Jeroboam. The Bible states that Ahab allowed the cult worship of Baal to become an acceptable religion of the kingdom. His wife Jezebel was a devotee to Baal worship. Chapter 6 List of Proposed Assyrian References to Kingdom of Israel The table below lists all the historical references to the Kingdom of Israel in Assyrian records. King Omri's name takes the Assyrian shape of Humri, his kingdom or dynasty that of Bit Humri or alike, the house of Humri slash Omri.